What is PHP? PHP is, well, it's complicated. What are you? Oh, I have so many names. See, call me dad. Let's start from the beginning. Back in 1994, some dude from Greenland, Rasmus Lerdorf, was looking for a job. He wanted a way to track the online resume views on his blog, so he figured to write this, like many others, in the almighty C using CGI binaries. No, not the video editing thing, I will explain it later. Since it was used on his blog, he named it Personal Homepage Tools, or PHP Tools for short. It worked fine, but there was one issue, Rasmus was a programmer. It wasn't what it is today, so it needed to grow. He couldn't stop there. He added more stuff to it, introduced a million bugs, and ruined PHP's perfection like any other developer trying to fix things that aren't broken. I'm kidding, of course. He added many useful things, like being able to connect to a database and develop more than just a resume tracker, and in early 1995, it was released to the public as open source. Then forums were added around September, and PHP was like, Dad, I'm like a year old now, I'm legally changing my name and no, it's not a phase. So the name was changed to Forms Interpreter, or FI. Here's where PHP was getting embedded into HTML, a bit wonky through comments, but you know what they say, if it looks stupid but it works, it's not stupid. It was still not a language, not really. It was technically CGI tool. It stands for Common Gateway Interfaces, basically the origin story of websites. They were written in a programming language, and their purpose at the time was to allow web servers to execute external programs. In layman's terms, it was early programs magic for web pages your grandfather surfed on, as it gave these pages some interactions so they looked less like a wanted poster and more like a living thing. Eventually, with modern tech, CGI went out of style and got buried in the sand, but that's not what the story is about. This story was about how the almighty FI was ruling the world for uh, uh, a month or less. Never mind. Apparently, Daddy Rasmus came back in October to rename it yet again and call it Personal Homepage Construction Kit. Construction Kit is better than tools, I guess. Either way, it was a big deal. Instead of Rasmus doing everything, PHP was more open to public now, so that developers could add bugs of their own. This new version resembled C, which was a clever decision since it made the devs at the time feel like at home in technologies they already know. PHP was getting speed, but it had limitations still. It only worked on Unix and POSIX systems, which was bad because Windows held, and still holds, a large market share. In 1996... Oh no, not this again! PHP was renamed to PHP FI because Rasmus has naming decisions making of Chidi from the good place. Okay, we have so many big choices to make. Let's let's start small. Do you want to use a dry erase board or the regular pen and paper? Just pick. Chidi, just pick! Regardless, this was where PHP was really taking off as more of a language than an extension of something. If I rolled back into town, we got user-defined functions, a lot of databases to choose from, and yes, it got cookies too. With cookies in jars, the developers were finally ready to join the dark side of programming, as around the world, by May of 1998, this iteration happened in 60,000 domains. Keep in mind, this was late 90s, so that number was... 1% of all domains. And PHP lived happily ever after. That is, until 1997, when people were like, you know what PHP needs? Another f***ing name change. And some better features, but never mind that. By people, I mean Andy Goodmans and Zeev Sraski of Tel Aviv. Apparently, when they were developing something in PHP FI for a school e-commerce project, they thought it was kind of inefficient and lacking much needed features. The next logical step is to go on Reddit and make a whiny thread, right? Wrong. They f***ing approached Rasmus and proposed to work with him to make PHP better, and he was like, okay, sure. That's like me thinking Windows 10 sucks ass and DMing Bill Gates so we can talk about some changes I have, and him inviting me as a co-owner. 
early programming was a different time, man. And the craziest part? They actually made it better. Working with Rasmus, they heavily expanded upon the previous version. They gave support for object-oriented programming, a better interface, more APIs, and made it easier to join and improve upon the code. The last part was incredibly important, because it allowed way more developers to join and upgrade PHP, which helped it become the language it is today. Take notes, developers, you can't do everything by yourself. PHP was renamed again, this time being the last time it went through an identity crisis. They decided to finalize it with PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Uh, you mean personal homepage, right? Nope, just PHP. And the name is a recursive background. What the f- whatever. At least the name stopped. And hey, now there's a fancy new number, PHP 3. Technically, this makes some sense, as the version before this was PHP FI version 2. The amount of websites running PHP went up 10 times as now it was not only platform dependent, but it could be used on Mac and all main Windows systems at the time. Not long after that, by winter of the same year, new changes were already coming into works. The co-owners, Ziv and Andy, noticed that PHP needed an in-house upgrade and some better performance to go with it. At the time, PHP was heavily relied on third-party APIs to make many things work, and the overall modularity still needed work. To solve all this, they came up with the Zend engine, named after the creators Z, Eve, and Andy. <laughs> If you ask me, they should have called it the Zendmus engine, but I guess that doesn't have the same ring to it, so it is a missed opportunity. The engine was released and became coupled with the new version, PHP 4. Besides that, they released some major key features such as support for many more web servers, HTTP sessions, output buffering, more secure ways of handling user input, and so on and so forth. This version and the engine set the base layer for future generations of PHP, the groups who have all sorts of modern day cool features in the versions of today, but I guess that's a story for another time. My name is Alex, and this has been the early history of PHP. Special thanks to php.net manual, and special thanks to you too. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please support the channel by subscribing and tuning in again. See ya!